Harvard economics professor N. Gregory Mankiw was the chairman of George W. Bush's Council of Economic Advisors and counseled Mitt Romney on economic issues in both 2006 and 2012. So he's one of the leading top conservative economists in the country. He just wrote a paper defending the rich entitled, quote, in defense of the 1%. Not so subtle there, are you? So the arguments he uses are actually very old school arguments, very traditional conservative arguments. And what I wanted to do was come out here, summarize his case for you, and then after you get an idea of where he's coming from, I wanted to respond to all of his points. So uh, basically to put what he said in a nutshell, he said, look, we're living in uh, essentially a natural hierarchy. The rich earned it, and they're by and large the most talented in society, and to tax them more or try and mess with the system is a greater evil than just simply leaving the system as it is. And he even goes as far as to say that, I I'm not a genetic determinist, but genetics do partly play a role in your income and success level. So he's kind of walking a fine line in that regard too. So all in all, uh, his argument is the old, life is a game and the best win. So now let me respond. There's multiple problems with that kind of reasoning. First of all, life is not a game. <laughs> Let's just get that out, of the, that out of the way right out of the bat. And the best don't always win. In fact, that's a very infantile way to view the world. That analysis disregards all examples of what I like to call old money. So, for example, did Paris Hilton earn it? She's got all the money in the world. Or how about the kids of the Rockefellers or the Rothschilds or the Walmart heirs? We all know how much money they have. They have more money than the bottom 45% of the American people. Six people. Did they earn it? The kids of uh, the people who created Walmart or the grandkids? Yeah, you just simply can't make that case because it's not true. So they were given all of their money and it had nothing to do with their own merits. And the argument also presupposes that the game of life that we're living in isn't rigged. Well, again, I have news for you, it is rigged. So for African Americans, for example, it's like we started a foot race and white people got 75% of the way through the race and then we turned around and said, all right, black people, you can start running now. Yeah, but that's clearly not fair. And by the way, the second that the black people started running, uh, we go, okay, everything's fair now, everything's even. Yeah, but wait, you got a 75% uh, percent head start. What are you talking about? It's even. It's not even close to even. So, um, look at the tax system as well. This is another area that he doesn't discuss at all in the paper. The rich pay less as a percentage than the middle class. You remember the uh, Buffett rule, where that idea came from? Warren Buffett issued a challenge to CEOs on Wall Street. He said, look, if you can show me that you pay a higher percentage of income taxes, federal income taxes, com as compared to your secretary, I'll give you a million dollars of my own money. Nobody was able to collect. Why? Because as a percentage, after all of the loopholes and deductions and the nonsense, the secretaries who were making sixty dollars to $80,000 a year were paying a higher percentage of their income in federal taxes than the CEOs were who were making millions. So the game is rigged against the middle class earners and against the poor earners. And don't even get me started on the, the uh, capital gains rate, for example. So people like Mitt Romney, who make all of their money via investments now, Mitt Romney pays 14% or 15% in taxes on anywhere from $10 million to $20 million in income. Meanwhile, you can be a construction worker busting your ass over 50 hours a week, and you pay 25% in taxes when you make $70,000 a year. That's fair. The person who actually has to wake up in the morning and get his ass to work five days a week, that guy should pay a higher tax rate and he makes so much less and he does more work than Mitt Romney? Look, it doesn't make sense. It defies all reason. And the biggest point of all that the paper makes that is completely incorrect is this idea that, well, you know what? The United States is a meritocracy. The harder you work, the further you go. But again, reality shows that's, that's just not true. So what, there's no such thing as nepotism? There's no such thing as the less qualified nephew of the owner of the business getting the job over the qualified person? 
there's no such thing as a, a woman who's more qualified not getting a job because they picked a man over her. There's no such thing as, like we actually learned as a matter of fact, that if you put a black traditional name on a resume versus a white sounding traditional name, that the white uh, name gets more hits even if it's the exact same resume. So there's no such thing as, everybody, it's literally everybody, as hard as you work, that's as, as far as you go in life. Well, that's just flat out not true. I personally know people who own businesses that make hundreds of thousands of dollars that work significantly less harder than uh, people who are landscapers. The landscapers work more hours, it's much more uh, backbreaking work, they're actually working harder, and they get paid significantly less. And there's a million examples of that too. We all know that that's the case. So, it, look, it's, it, you know what it is, and this is uh, the bottom line and why the paper is so off base. And there's been studies that show this to be true as well. Conservatives uh, are much bigger on doing what's called system rationalization. So, in other words, that means I will look around at the way everything is and say it's supposed to be like that by definition, and you put the pieces together like it's a puzzle in your head to try to explain why things are the way they are. So in other words, if you see a homeless person, for example, you think, well, they deserve it. They, they either deserve it or they chose that lifestyle. It couldn't possibly be that there was a series of horrendous events that led to them being in that situation unjustly, right? So conservatives are much bigger on that. And that's also, by the way, why he brings up the genetics argument. It's an easy way for him to square the circle. So without presenting ev any evidence, he says, well, that's just the way people are. If you make $40,000, you're genetically predisposed to make $40,000 because you're just not all there mentally. Well, again, that's empirically not correct. There's no evidence to support that position. And what they're engaging in is system rationalization, and they're not being objective in their analysis of the economy.